Hello everyone, in this video we are going to clone the hand and flip it over to the other side. Now this is something that we've done before but not quite like this. Uh, so we'll be using the constraint called the static transformation. So we'll go over here, get... So we'll be using this little node here called the static transformation. So this is a part of the constraint uh, subgroup over here. You can go and get it as you would with any other node and simply drag it in. We won't do that just yet. We'll just take care of cloning our hand first and then take care of that part. So first thing we want to do is we want to access the hand from our timeline. So either from over here or we can do so as well directly from within the node view. Um, and we are going to right click on this particular drawing layer. Now, uh, there are multiple options. I mentioned that we were gonna clone it. Um, I could just copy and paste using uh, Control C, Control V or Command C, Command V uh, into the node view here, but uh, this would clone the layer as well as the timing and we don't necessarily want that so we want to be able to change to a different drawing if need be and not have the other hand follow the same pattern so i'm going to right click over here and at the top we have clone selected layers drawings only clone selected layers drawings and timing so we want only the drawings to follow not the timing, we want that to stay uh, distinct. So we are going to pick this one, clone it, and now I have a second layer, which is right here underneath. This is going to be our hand back. So I'm going to call it as such, just rename that layer. And let's go over to our hand back peg. We'll attach it and just connect it to our composite. So now it is connected to the forearm back which we had set up previously and the hand is in the exact same position as the other one. Now this is not exactly what I want. I actually want it to be over here in the uh, in the position where it would connect to that hand. So what I can do right now, I already have um, so now it is connected to the forearm back master, and I have my hand over here. Um, the pivot point I've reset just now so we can see properly uh, what we're going to be doing with those. Um, and I'm going to go over my tool properties. And I have two buttons over here. I can flip horizontal or flip vertical for this particular example. We'll flip as horizontal, bring it over here. Uh, since our character was pretty much centered, it's practically dead on. So we can adjust a little bit. We see there's a slight crease. We can go and repin the, reposition that very slightly. And there we have it. So now let's go back to our node view and into our node. We can actually come and position our pivot point over here and bring that over in the right spot. We remember we had positioned uh, on these nodes our pivot points on the underlay. So if you want, you can reactivate it and um, kind of go and get your underlay node to bring it on top, just to kind of know exactly where that pivot point should be. And let's go and throw that on top directly so we can see right away how uh, easy it can be to kind of keep those 
uh, inside of your rig so that you can reuse them creating new drawings. So I'm going to remove that again. And you can go and turn it back off if you want to be certain that you're not going to see it. And now we've got our hand in the proper position, right? So um, this is how we would do it before. Now, when I reset my peg, the hand is going to pop back directly uh, on top of the other one, which is the original cloned drawing. So the drawing is still pasted into that position and I can't exactly go and move it around either from the reset position because these two hands are linked together. So any changes that I make to this one will also be applied to the original one. So what I can do to fix this is go and get my little constraint node that I mentioned before, the static transformation right here. I'm going to bring that in so it is a darker shade of green. You can actually slide that just over your drawing and underneath the peg that holds the values. And inside here, I can go inside of the properties. So basically the static transformation will act as a peg um, and will contain all the values. Only these values over here, you won't be able to reset. So even if I were to, um, to press Shift R with this node selected, Shift R, which is a shortcut for resetting all the values of a peg, um, nothing will happen at that moment. So right now, inside of my peg, I have some values. I have a positioning value. I have a uh, scaling value over here, the minus one. Uh, the only value that is not taken into consideration in terms of um, the static transformation is the pivot information. So this is going to remain inside of the peg. So if I want to bring in the info from my peg into my static transform, I just need to go over to the options that we have here. It is actually much easier to import those directly inside of your static transformation node rather than going to type them in directly in here. So we want to bake the immediate parent's transformation. So the immediate parent, which is just above. The other option that you have is bake all incoming transformations. Um, this is going to take not just this peg, but everything above it. So taking my static transform, I'm going to bake my immediate parent transformation and now we have it, we have 0 0.021. Uh, we have some values that have been imported in there. And what exactly is happening to my hand? It popped back into this position. So the reason is that now we have the exact same positions over here and we also still have them inside of our peg. So we want to remove those values from the peg to bring back the hand over on this side because now these values are adding up. So if I select my peg, press Shift R, it will reset back to its original position. The only thing I need to do now is position the pivot point again just to make sure that we have it in the center. So the only thing you need to do now is position your pivot point where the hand is uh, so again, we kept the pivot information inside of the underlay. If ever you want to see it, you can always go and grab the little underlay layer, throw that on top. If you've turned off the underlay from your layer, oops, you can always go and reactivate it over here to be able to see it. And from your peg, you'll be able to simply drag that over using the advanced animation tools and place it back on top to be able to rotate it. So now, even if I reset my peg, 
nothing other than the pivot information is contained in here. So I can reset this one, nothing's gonna happen unless I actually go inside of it and change the values. These are not tied to any function columns, therefore they cannot be changed uh, or keyframe. They are local values that you can only hold inside of this node. So at this point, you may not want to forget to disconnect our little pivot indicator and simply turn it back off to make sure that we don't see this little point here again. So this is how you would use the static transformation to really bake the values of a peg into a static information. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video.